All right, here's another one that's uh, very tough. It seems to me that everybody's getting this wrong. Uh, I've heard a lot of explanations on this particular verse, and none of them make any sense at all. So I want to try to explain this and, and open this up for discussion. I want to encourage you to share your thoughts on this. Okay, so Isaiah 65. All right, and it's talking about the end of the world and the world to come. All right, so I think if we go here to verse 15, and you shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. Uh, speaking of uh, what was considered Jews, for the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name, and another name is Christians. All right, and it goes on for behold. I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mine. So we're getting a picture painted here of the world to come. Okay. Now, in verse 20 it says, There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that has not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. So this is taught, what all this means is that the those that are saved are going to have everlasting life, and those that are not saved are going to die the second death, and they won't be a part of the new heavens and the new earth. This is a very difficult way of saying it because, I mean, obviously a lot of people don't understand it. It's difficult, for sure. But there's only one way to look at this, and that is to look at this word child and understand that this also is center. It's talking about the same thing, child and the center. Now, how can you reconcile that? Well, it's, that part is easy. Making the, connect, making the connection is hard. Okay, So, for the child shall die in 100 years old. So, first of all, it's important to understand that in the resurrection, there is no more death. Okay, so this could only be uh, in reference to the separation from the saved to the unsaved. In the resurrection there's no more death so we're not gonna see people dying. We're not gonna see sinners in the resurrection. They they are um, that all comes to an end at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the child shall die in a hundred years old, but the sinner, which is the same person, being a hundred years old, it tells you right there, hundred years old, hundred years old. That's how you make the connection, child and sinner. And again, this is talking about in the life to come, that this is going to be over and this is going to be forever. So in other words, those of us that are saved have everlasting life and those that are not saved will not have everlasting life. They will be stopped, if you will, at Judgment Day. So when the Lord comes, that's Judgment Day, the unsaved are destroyed forever, the second death. All right, so for the child shall die in a hundred years old. So think about this. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So the child being a hundred years old, that's, that's going to go away. The center, which is the child, 
shall be accursed that means uh, that we can draw a parallel here let's do it this way and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to ever to shame and everlasting contempt so this is parallel with this being accursed everlasting contempt so they're accursed they're contempt they die the second death they cease from existence I mean, it's nothing worse than that when a soul is is killed uh, you know like what we read fear not them which can kill the body not the soul but fear him which can kill both body and soul in hell so there's no question there, no, there can be no other explanation it's not possible to come up with a different explanation that makes sense uh, so I want to encourage you to share your thoughts and just challenge what I'm saying but this is the only possible explanation that the child is the sinner spoken here and that the unsaved will not be resurrected to everlasting life in the world to come that's all that means and it's pretty clear that this is all talking about the life to come they shall not build and another inhabit they shall not plant and another eat for as the days of a tree are the days of my people and mine elect shall enjoy the work of their hands they shall not labor in vain nor bring forth for trouble for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them and it shall come to pass that before they call I will answer and while they are yet speaking I will hear the wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and thus shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. I would like to hear your thoughts concerning any of this. Alright, I think that's it.